Today we're going to talk about the collision model. Now, collision you may think of as two cars colliding, but in chemistry, we talk about collision. Collision is going to be two atoms colliding. And an effective collision is one that actually results in a reaction. So let's find out what that's all about. So first, what we're going to do is look at this reaction. It's two BrNO, bromine, nitrogen, oxygen, is together as one compound. And it decomposes and produces two nitrogen monoxides and one bromine molecule. How does that work? Well, we've got the four-step process here. So first you have the NOBr, two of them approach each other at a high speed. And after they do that, so we see in the first one, here they're approaching each other at high speed. So that's the first thing. So this is number one. Then number two, a collision occurs. So they actually collide together. They hit each other. So what happens when they collide, the energy from that collision causes the Br nitrogen, the bromine nitrogen bonds to break. So you see here we the bonds between the nitrogen and the bromine are breaking on each of those separate atoms. And then we're also forming bonds between the two bromines. So here we see a, for, a bond forming as well. And then the last part the pro, are the products of the reaction. So you end up with two nitrogen monoxides and one Br2 molecule. So what we, don't, what we only see when we, when we look at a written reaction is the reactants and the products. We don't see that whole process that occurs in between. So if we look at this, these are the reactants. Those are our two BrNOs. And over here are our products, two nitrogen monoxides, two nitrogen monoxides and one bromine molecule, Br2. So let's talk a little bit more about this. So what we're going to go over is the collision model. Now, a reaction occurs if a molecule does two things. First, it has to collide with enough energy. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So it has to collide with enough energy. And the second thing, it has to have the proper orientation. And for that molecule to react, it has to have proper orientation. So the effect of this would be if you increase temperature, what, in, what temperature does is that makes the rate go faster. Now, why does that happen? It, it goes faster for two reasons. One, the molecules collide more often. If they're going faster, there's a better chance that there's going to be more and more collision. So increased temperature increases the reaction rate because molecules collide more often, number one. Number two, the molecules have more energy. Remember, we see above, the molecules must have enough energy to collide. So when you increase temperature, molecules, more molecules are actually moving, fa moving faster, so more molecules have what we call the sufficient energy. That is the effect of temperature. Now let's look at the effect of concentration. Remember, concentration is the number of moles per unit volume. So if you increase the concentration, that increases the reaction rate. Why? Well, the reason it does, if there's more molecules in a set volume, there's a better chance that they're going to collide. So, more collisions, more reactions. So those are, that's, are two things that affect collisions and whether or not they occur and whether or not they're effective, temperature and concentration. An effective collision. What is an effective collision? An effective collision is a collision that actually results in a reaction. So, I have two drawings here, one of an ineffective collision, one of an effective collision. So we see here the ineffective collision, it's both it's still the nitrogen monoxide, and this is with ozone this time. And the ineffective collision we have here, the ineffective collision we see here, these did not result in a reaction. So at the end, you have the same products that you started with. There is no reaction that is an ineffective collision. At the bottom, we have an effective collision. An effective collision resulted because there, it, there are new products. The products of this reaction are nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. So you may not see that right here, but the two products are nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. So this is an effective collision because it resulted in a reaction. Let's continue. A big part of whether or not you have an effective collision is the idea of activation energy. Activation energy is that minimum energy molecules must possess in order for a collision to occur. How do we find that? If you look at a chart that has that, remember activation energy is a place when you go from reactants to the top of the hill. So that is what we call the activation energy, which is sometimes abbreviated E sub A. So this is our activation energy. If molecules, if we say this is the amount of energy they have, if they have just a little bit less than that, 
no reaction occurs. So molecules, when they hit each other, they ha m must have that minimum energy. Anywhere below that minimum energy, there will be absolutely no reaction. So activation energy is a minimum it must have. It can have more than that, but anything less than that, and there will be absolutely no reaction. What is the effect of a catalyst in the collision model? A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction without being used up. If we look at this reaction here, we see this is an exothermic reaction. And let's look, we see at the activation energy shown here without a catalyst. So if you go from the reactants, once again, to the top of the hill, that is your energy of activation. So that we'll just label this E sub A. That's the energy of activation. How can you lower that energy of activation is by using a catalyst. An example of a catalyst in our bodies is an enzyme. An enzyme is a biological, biological catalyst. What it, an enzyme or any catalyst does is it lowers the energy, that minimum energy that is needed for a reaction to occur. For example, in our bodies, it, it lets reactions occur at the temperature of our body. We don't have to heat up our bodies in order to digest food. The enzyme or other catalysts play an important role because we see there's a much lower activation energy when a catalyst is used. The collision model, a couple things about it, and we're going to finish with this. What makes the reactions go faster? If you have higher temperatures, there's higher speeds, there's more high energy collisions, and there's more collisions that actually break bonds, and so you have a faster reaction. That's the collision model. I love chemistry. I love chemistry. I love chemistry.